What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and I'm out here on the farm today to pick up my tractor to take it two and a half hours to our recreational property so I can put in about four or five acres of food pots with that tiller on back there. But the problem I have is I don't want to take the loader with me and I've been starting to take the loader off a lot more than I have in the past and I find that it's easier to use the tractor when you're brush hogging and tilling, you can get up closer to the edges and it's less wear and tear on the loader, especially the pins. The pins will wear out as it bounces around while you're tilling. So I take the loader off, but that introduces a whole new problem, which is how to attach my tractor to the trailer. Previously, I would use a strap across the loader or the front of the loader bucket, and I'll show you how I used to do that. And then on the holes in the side where the loader attaches, I would put straps there, and then I put a strap across the back implement. So then it would be basically four points of contact that would hold it on the trailer. But when you take the loader off, it's really hard to fasten down the front of the tractor. So I'll show you how I've been doing it, and then I'll also show you this new part that I just got in from 511 Designs that I'm gonna try and put on today. And that will give me a tie down option in the front when the loader's off. So for over a dozen years that I've owned Kubota L-Series, I've had to trailer them from where I keep them stored to where I use them. In previous times, it was at a neighbor's property where I kept it in the pole barn and I'd take it to a hunting property. And now it's back and forth from Piney Grove to the dealer or from Piney Grove to our hunting property. So the way I've attached it is I would get these straps with these hooks and I would go in this cavity right here where the loader is mounted and I would hook it there and I'd take the other hook and hook either to a stake pocket or the frame somewhere and then tighten this hook, tighten this strap up and then take a piece of the strap put under there so that it doesn't cut on that sharp edge and then tighten it up and I do the same thing on the other side. So that's what I would do at the midpoint of the tractor and I can still do that when I take the loader off but I'll show you what I can't do. So I'm not going to actually strap it down. I'm just going to show you how I would do it before. But I would take the same style strap with this type of hook on it. And I would hook it into my trailer or a stake pocket. And then I have these abrasion resistant uh, black strips here that hold another layer of strapping. And I would put that right there. And that would hold the loader down. So holding the loader, which is attached to the tractor, then the midpoint of the tractor, and then also the implement having a strap over the implement. That's how I used to trailer. But when I take this loader off, I've got nothing on front of the tractor that I can hook to. And I'll show you what I have been doing. So rather than use a strap, what I've been doing is putting a chain through here and chain binders in where this cow, I call it a cow catcher, but you can call it a grill guard is. And then I chain that down, but it's kind of sloppy there. And I, don't, I just don't like it. It's been fine. I've trailered like that twice before. But what I've got is a new piece that will go between the grill guard and the frame here. And that'll give me a big, I think three and a half inch hole that I can hook my chain binder to. If you decide to use this method to strap your tractor down to your trailer, on the left side of the tractor, there's absolutely nothing there to interfere when you hook on the inside of this circular piece of metal, this tube here. But on the other side, when you put the strap in there with the hook, you gotta be more careful because deep against the side of the engine block back there, is a hydraulic line. And there's plenty of clearance to get the hook around the back of this circular piece of metal. But you gotta be careful you don't snag the hydraulic line and tighten down your strap because you're gonna get a big surprise when you get to your destination and find out that you've got hydraulic fluid everywhere and your tractor won't come off the trailer. In order to put these new brackets on, I've gotta bring the tractor in here and take off the loader. What we've got here are these brackets from 511 Design, and it's actually the number five and the word 11 and design with a Z. I'll put a link at the bottom here. We're not sponsored by them, but we saw these on another channel. I think it was Good Works Tractor. Shannon over there does a real good job. And uh, we saw these and went to the website and really liked them. He actually was sold out after Shannon had them on his channel. 
And uh, we got these on back order. We just got them in the other day and they're really heavy duty. But what they do is you take off this grill guard right here and they sandwich in between there. So imagine if that went inside there between the orange and the gray, and then this will give you a place to put a hook to tie down your tractor to your trailer. So as luck would have it, the socket wouldn't fit in there attached to my impact wrench. And so I drove down the road and met a couple, well, met one new neighbor, the neighbor that I know wasn't home. And uh, he actually had some tools that he let me borrow. So we should be able to get this done. So I'm gonna back these four bolts off and see if maybe two bolts will hold the weight while I slip in the bracket behind the other two. So the bolts that came out of the tractor are that long and the new bolts are that much longer. And there's no instructions that say which one is which. I guess it's kind of a preference. Well, I would think that would go down. So I think it would go forward. Yeah, I think that's the way it goes like that because you wouldn't want it like this, I don't think, where it's back. Let's put it on there and look at it. And I think being forward like this will give you more clearance around your tire for chaining it down to the trailer. If it was leaned back like that, it might create a problem. So I think we're gonna go with this right here. Doing this is a one man job, but it definitely would be easier with a helper. Okay, we got the other side done. We're just going to let the bolts from the other side hold it up while we put this one in on this side. So give us the same downward angle on this side. All right, I think I got that one started. Neighbor even let me borrow a ratchet, not just the extension, so that was nice. Now I'm gonna take a step back and look at it and make sure before I tighten it that they are the way I want them. I've looked at them from a couple of different angles. I think that's right. If it's not, I don't guess it's a huge deal to swap them, but I think having them come forward instead of backwards is better and gives you more options for tying down to your trailer. Time for final torque. So it's better not to use an extension when you're torquing things down, but there's no way I can get in here otherwise. But this half inch drive impact wrench from DeWalt, it'll take off lug nuts. So I'm pretty sure these are getting tight. All right, they're on there. I've got to run the tools back to the neighbor with the ATV because it's a mile down the road or so. And then I got to put the ATV on the trailer and then we'll load the tractor and see how these new brackets work. That ATV is a lot longer than I thought it was. It's taking up that whole trailer. I'm actually gonna have to take that spreader off the back so it don't stick off too much on the side. got a 5 16 chain here and since I don't have a stake pocket I'm gonna hook it up under the trailer frame here and then I think I'm gonna hook my uh, chain binder here right to that new bracket I put on and then hook to the chain all right I'm gonna go do the same thing on the other side that looks like that's working pretty good I don't know how long this chain is but it's long enough to go across this trailer with plenty extra do the same thing over here that's gonna probably put orange paint on my nice gray hooks, but at least I won't lose my tractor alongside the road. I don't even have that thing all the way tight and our, I can already see it pushing down and squishing down on the tires a little bit. That's, that's so much better than where I used to run the chain. You probably can't see it, but there's a little bit of paint worn off there where I had the chain go across this cow catcher, this grill guard and hold down. This is much better because the tractor could slide up under that chain left and right. It can't go left and right now because it's attached to the tractor, not up under a chain. All right guys, those 511 design brackets went on pretty simple as you saw, and they look like they're a great attachment point for a chain and a chain binder set. So I think uh, they're well worth their money. They're, they're thicker and appear stronger than the actual frame of the tractor I attached them to. So, do, so I don't anticipate having any problems with them going forward. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video and the modifications that we made to our L3901. If you did, please click that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share with your friends. But otherwise, that's all I've got. And as always, remember, life is short. 
tractor hard. Okay guys, I wanted to close out this video with a little bit of real world experience with these 511 design brackets, these hooks on the front of the tractor. I towed two hours away and two hours back uh, to go do some food plots with my Kubota L3901. And I absolutely give a two thumbs up to these brackets that I put on here. They make uh, securing the tractor to the trailer a lot easier. They're quicker. And I just felt like the tractor was more secure to the trailer, I guess. I just felt safer, I guess, towing like this than I have in the previous 12 or 13 years that I've been towing L-series tractors around. So I highly recommend them. Please go over to their website if you're looking for high quality products, high quality tie downs. They also have grill guards and things like that for your tractor. And they don't just have Kubota stuff. They also have stuff for John Deere's. But I wanted to end this video with that little update.